Well, it doesn't quite seem real, but it's been 633 days since the last time the Gonzaga women's basketball team played a regular season game in front of a real crowd here in the McCarthy Athletic Center. And tonight, it's a bunch of good news. The crowd is back. The Zags are back. And we also have a genuinely interesting season opener here with upset alert potential. We're tipping it all off tonight with the Zags and the Montana State Bobcats. Well, it is so great to have you with us for game number one of the season alongside Bria Cade. I'm Greg Talbot. And if you follow the Gonzaga women's program, you know just how much they lost from last year. Bria, 40% of this roster is new. That's right, Greg. There are four true freshmen and one transfer on this roster. Developing early chemistry is going to be the far most important thing. They lost their three leading scorers in Jill Townsend, Jen Worth, and Leanne Worth. Also, their top three rebounders. 50% of their scoring has gone from last year. So, a lot of responsibilities now on the shoulders of the players that are coming back. Mainly the junior point guard, Kaylee Trong. Bria, she was good last year. Now she's got to run the show. Kaylee Trong was actually the player of the game in the exhibition from last weekend. She's really more of a distributor, pass first point guard. The Zags have scoring options, but Kaylee's going to have to get them the ball in the face of a really tough defensive team at MSU. And the Zags relying on their experience is going to be extra important tonight because Montana State is a seriously experienced team. Nine out of their best 10 players are back from last year, including their point guard, the reigning Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year in Darian White. Yes, White. White was in the running for Conference Player of the Year last year. She does it all, steals, passes, scores out of will. She's an aggressive, dominant player, and she's not afraid to take over the game and probably will tonight. Well, Montana State might end up winning the Big Sky this year. That's how good they are. The question is tonight, are they good enough to knock off a big-name team in the Zags? It's time to find out. It's basketball time in the kennel after this on the WCC Network on Stadium. And welcome back to McC the McCarthy Athletic Center here in Spokane. Another college basketball season is about to get underway in just a couple of seconds. The Montana State Popcats, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, as GU taps the keg on the 2021-2022 season. Lindsey Heinen to tip for the Montana State Bobcats against the senior forward out of Post Falls a couple minutes away, Melanie Kempton. And it's time basketball time in the kennel. And Darian White corrals it for Montana State to get us started today. MSU actually started their season a couple days ago. They played Carroll College, a smaller school out of Montana, on Tuesday. And you know, Bria, that game was surprisingly close. The Bobcats only won by nine points as it's stolen away by Verjoge. And up the court here comes Kaylee Trong. Yes, in that game, Hines, um, 33 for the Bobcats, has 16 as well as number 11. And speaking of 33, there's big number 33 for the Zags. Melody Kempton, she didn't win the tip, but she's able to get the first two points of the season for the Zags there. Zags really expecting a lot out of Melody this year, a really versatile player during the exhibition. Nine rebounds, seven points, four assists. They're asking her to do a little bit of everything, including holding down the center here on the defensive zone. And a free throw line jumper will not go from Mia Hughes. Second chance put back good from Darian White. Not surprising there, Bria, their first points of the season from her. Definitely have to watch that Darian. She might be small, but she will go in there and get those rebounds. She is not afraid of size. That's absolutely true. Darian White will be talking about her all night. Led the team in multiple categories last year. Defensive foul on the floor. That looks like it's going to be against Leah Beatty. A 5'9 sophomore out of Midland, Texas. First foul of the game against Montana State. Let's take a look at your starting lineups for the Zags. A little bit different than we were expecting. Trong here on the inbound, also on the floor, Kempton. There's Abby O'Connor alongside Anna Maria Verjoge and Sierra Walker. And here is Sierra for a big three. She's got it. That's exactly what you want. Sierra can knock down those threes. Get her open, leave her open, kick it out to her, and she'll give it to you. Yeah, you said it, Bria. Sierra is their best returning three-point shooter from last year. She hit 45 last season. Outside to Lindsey Hine, tallest player on the floor tonight. She's six foot six, the true freshman out of Forsyth, Montana. Like you said, had a big game on Tuesday off the bench against Carroll College. 16 points, seven boards off the bench. Who does that? Here's Trong down the lane. No foul. There's a foul on the come down, though. That'll be defensively against Montana State. And that is against Leah Beatty, her first personal. 
So here comes Kaylee to the free throw line. Trying to make it a two possession game for GU early on here. Kaylee led the team in assists last year as their point guard. She is also their best returning scorer. Well, he's their top returning scorer. Had about eight points a game last year. Like we said off the top, a lot on her shoulders this season. Had 14 against Central in their exhibition last weekend, too. And goes one for one. Pulled down on the putback, attempted by Michaela Williams. Rather, by Melody Kempton. And we had a foul on the go up there, too, by Melody. That's on Lindsay Hine, the 6'6 freshman. So here comes Kempton for two. She was fouled on the way up. So GU goes two for four to start. Abby O'Connor had her hands on that one. It's a jump ball. And possession's going to stay with GU on this end of the floor. Long possession to kind of get us started here. Montana State goes to the bench for the first time. Lexi Deedon in off the bench, who was also incredible off the bench against Carroll College on Tuesday. Really remarkable. Shot 43% last year as well. Outside of Kempton. Feeds down low to Verjoge. Shot no good, and there goes Darian White with the rebound. We talked a little at the top of the broadcast, Bree, about how important Darian White is to their game as that is an air ball long three from Beatty. Darian White, also one of their best rebounders despite her size and being a point guard. Right. She's quick. She gets open. She gets the steal. She is all over the, field, the floor, so it's very important to stay on her because if she's open, she'll make something happen. We have a foul on the floor. That's on Ana Maria Verjoge, her first. She sent Cola Bad Bear to the court. Also, talk about a Mount Rushmore name, huh? Number 10, the forward out of Montana State, Cola Bad Bear. That's about as cool a name as it gets, huh? It has to be a future Hall of Famer or something. At least the school Hall of Famer. School Hall of Famer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here comes White, working on Sierra Walker. Already hit a big three. Trying to break the zone out in the corner. It's Lombardo around and out. And recovered by Abby O'Connor. Cool to see Abby starting. One of the more experienced members of this team, despite the fact that she joined only midway through last season. Trong for three. Bring it up. The Zags are doing fabulous, drawing other help from the Bobcats and then kicking it out to that open player to knock down those threes. That's their key to this game. And the Bobcats will take a timeout. We'll take it with him. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium after a 10-2 lead. All right, 10 to 2 Bulldogs to get things started here in the first quarter today on the WCC Network on Stadium. Greg Talbot and Bria Cade with you tonight. Now, Bria, Montana State fans who are watching tonight might be a little bit worried considering the opening score here for GU 10 to 2. The good news for them, the reason they don't really have to worry, if you were to ask us, is considering they actually started down 7 0 on Tuesday against Carroll College. Right. They roared back to win that game, but they did start 7-0 to a small school, so starting a little bit cold is not out of the ordinary for them based on what we saw Tuesday. Right. All they have to do is get a few players high, and they feed off each other, and they'll be right back in the game. So based on what we've seen already from this Gonzaga team, some pretty strong defense, pretty strong rebounding, and good three-point shooting. Saw one already from Sierra Walker and one from Kaylee Trong as well. Working it past the zone. Here's Bad Bear for two, and she's got it. One of their strong down-low players, Cola Bad Bear. She's got mid-range game there as well, but more importantly, they love to have her down on the post. She led the team in blocks last year. Loves to play hungry down-low. That's on the scouting report. That was actually her first career of, I mean, her first um, basket of the season. There you go. And here comes White. Bad Bear and the Bobcats working on the Zags defensive zone here. They've been passing successfully through it. They just haven't put in the bucket so far. It was tipped away by Trong. 
White got it back, nine on the shot clock. Turnaround won't go from Deedon. And the Zags will push. Trong down the lane again, tried to distribute, and Melody Kempton wasn't ready for it. Jump ball, this one will go back Montana State's way. Zags had it the first time. The fight that Melody Kempton brings is one thing that the Zags love about her. She's a leader with her with her words and her actions. Just diving on that ball was the perfect example. Even though they're up, she still is hungry for her. Okay, and would you look at this? One of the questions we had coming into this year has just been answered. Would the Zags play the Trong twins at the same time? Kaylee Trong and Kaylin Trong. The answer is yes. Kaylee number 11 still in the lineup. She started Kaylin Trong wearing 14 off the bench. Yvonne Ejim also checking in for the first time this year for the Zags as the three will not go. And Abby O'Connor's gonna push. Good ball movement, Ejim down low, she's got it for two. You know, Bria, people are really high on Yvonne Ejim. A lot of people think she's gonna have a breakout year. Why is that? I believe it. She is strong in the paint. She is not afraid. She says she built some confidence um, in the tournament last year when the girls got sick, the coaches came to her and asked the players to step up, and she said that was her moment that she wanted, and she took it. Abby O'Connor just a little bit short. Here goes Kempton trying to go back up, no foul. Third chance, Ejim, you bet. Back to back, there you go. So she plays aggressively down low is what we just saw, yes? Yes. She goes up hard, and she will continue to go up hard. Had a good international season as well. Played on the under-19 uh, the under 19 team recently for the Canadian team. She's from Calgary, Alberta. And this one's going back the other way. So let's take a look at the, the Zags lineup that's on the floor right now, Bria. We have the two Trong twins, Yvonne Ejim. Abby O'Connor and Melody Kempton also have been playing since the very start of this one for GU. The Zags seem to be pretty high on the coaching staff on Abby O'Connor and the experience she can bring. Yes, Abby O'Connor, she did a lot for the um, conference she left with. Foul on the floor, that's on defense. Go ahead, Bria. Sorry. She did a lot with the team she just left. She's coming over here with a lot of experience, helping to bring them scoring and defense. And here comes Kelly Trong at the line. That's already five fouls against Montana State to get us started here. Still just one on GU. And Kaylee Trong's got that. I'll tell you, it's really funny, Bria, the, the kennel here in the McCarthy Athletic Center. The fans are so good about getting loud when the game is going on, but boy, do they quiet down when it's free throws, huh? Silence. They hit that clap and spirit fingers, and the gym becomes silent. Yeah, dead quiet. All right, here comes Kaylin Trong working the offense. The twin Kaylees over in the corner. The juniors out of Houston, Texas. Tried to distribute to the middle. It was poked away. Yvonne Ejim collects and goes back up hard. Won't go. And the Zags defensive rebounding really strong so far. Another chance here for Trong. And a new shot clock. O'Connor working. Good drive baseline. She gets fouled. She'll go to the line. So Abby O'Connor joined the team midway through last season. She got immediate eligibility when she came over from Loyola, Chicago and contributed pretty immediately. She did not start, but the fact that she started tonight, I think would be a pretty good sign. They want some, some veteran leadership. She is a senior, Bria. Right, and the tournament, when she transferred last year, she actually couldn't play because of injuries and sickness, but after that, she was out there for the rest of the year. Zag's a little slower to get started here on free throws. Now five for eight to get started today. And here's Deedon in the corner. And that's going to be a foul on Trong. Kaylin Trong for the record. And boy, did Kaylin look great at uh, Numerica Fan Fest a couple weeks ago, Bria. Uh, she led all scores, had 12 points, went 5 for 7 shooting. She was really efficient the first time we saw her this year in this building. Right. And here's Ashley Van Sickle working the offense now for the Bobcats. 
Played in all 24 league games last year. She didn't start, didn't start tonight either. And now Kaylin, the only Trong sister on the floor. Over there in the corner, Michaela Williams checking in for her first minutes of this season. Trong baseline. Clean on the reverse. And that's what you have to watch from the, the Trongs. They can find the open player or drive to the basket and finish themselves. Yeah, they were asked a lot last year to distribute, right? There was a lot of passing to the Worths. And they, like we said, the Zags lost their top three scorers and rebounders from last year. Is that one is up and good from Cola Bad Bear. They're going to be asked to do some scoring this year. Right. And they can do it. Already saw Kaylee drop a three from the corner a couple minutes ago. Three minutes to play here in the first. Far side for Williams. Out of bounds. And some height checking back in here for the Bobcats. Lindsey Hine coming back in the 6'6 freshman who looked really good already. And Mia Hughes checking back in as well. The freshman forward out of Woodenville, Washington. That's kind of the Zags recruiting area. And here comes Van Sickle running point. Easy feed to Hine. Can't you go back up with Williams? We have a travel on the floor. That one's going back GU's way. Okay, so Bria here as we approach the end of the first quarter, 2-4 to 3 to go. One of the questions coming into this game was, you know, Montana State's really played this year. They played their inner squad exhibition. They played an exhibition against South Dakota School of the Mines. They played Carroll College. We were wondering, since they played so much, would Gonzaga be at a disadvantage? Doesn't look like it so far. The team is definitely showing they have connections and they can feed off each other. And Gonzaga's got some height, too, looking at the matchup. Here's Verjoge, 10 on the shot clock. A little bit short, no foul called as Ejim went in there. And here comes Van Sickle. Sear Walker back in for GU. No foul, Verjoge gets the credit. And that's exactly the stop you want when you have a big on big. You need them just two to work it out. Pressing defense here from Ava Ranson. Trying to get to Trong. Step back, Jay. Beautiful, oh and one. Kaylin Trong, welcome to the season. Nice play by Kaylin Tron. She likes to drive to the basket, but if she doesn't see anything, she will come back out when she comes open. There you have it. And let's take a look at this play again. Now, this isn't actually a designed isolation play. She just did this all herself, ran around the defense, stepped back to Ching, and drew the foul. So, so she'll get a chance for one more here, and Gonzaga out to a big lead early, 21-6. Five to nine start for free throws. Here's Sierra Walker, and a second chance for GU. Williams. Late corral re rebound there by Caitlin Lombardo. Almost went out of bounds. Here's Leah Beatty. Darian White, not the loudest performance so far for Montana State. She's over in the corner. Here goes Hughes up with it. She's got one more coming. Zags not playing overly aggressively. That's only their third foul of the night. Already five against Montana State, and most of those came in the first couple of minutes. Bria, are you surprised uh, with how closely Montana State is playing to the basket on offense, given Gonzaga's size? Not at all. I am not surprised. They actually even did it against Carroll as well. They were looking to um, get their post involved, and they like the high-low game. Tougher thing for them is Gonzaga's got more size than Carroll, as you might expect. For Joge, looking for Ejim. Nice play. And there it is. Ejim isn't the tallest, but she will put it up like she is. Yeah, she's not short. She's six foot one, but she is a forward. Hughes, pure. So the offense starting to get going a little more efficiently now for Montana State. Still shooting just 35.5% from the floor tonight. 
Gonzaga shooting over 50 from the floor. White's going to have to watch those hand checks. She got a call for a lot of them in the game versus Carroll, and she just got called for one today. So Darian White, for all those reasons you mentioned, needs to be careful because not only is she the reigning Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year, she's also really aggressive, led the conference in steals last year. Right. So she goes for those hand checks. She goes for the ball. Definitely want her to go for it. Just watch it. Don't get fouled out. The team needs you. And Kaylin Trong hits her first. And there's Darian, first team all-conference point guard last year. About three steals and five rebounds a game. So strong on defense. Referees are waving this one off. And Kaylee Trong checks back in. Thirty seconds to go here in the first quarter. Montana State's gonna really enjoy this nice long break they're about to get and try to rework some things on defense you have to expect. And here comes White. No shot clock here. Bobcats can take their time to end the quarter. And White will take her time. Inside 10, working on Ejim. Sierra Walker there to meet her. Two seconds, Strong's gonna try a full quarter. Pretty close, end to one. Fans in the kennel, it's been a long time since they've been here and they've got a lot to be happy about. 24-11 Gonzaga, and after one, the Bulldogs are shooting over 50%. We're back with a second in a minute on the WCC Network on Stadium. Back here to start the second on the WCC Network on Stadium. Nice big cushion for the Bulldogs, 24-11. All right, Bria Cape, let's talk point guards coming into this game. We were talking Kaylee Trung versus Darian White. Kaylee's been pretty darn good so far. Kaylee has been pretty good so far. She's have, she's knocked down a three, and she's been able to get her teammates the ball, whereas Darian has struggled in a little bit trying to knock down their shots and get open and get her teammate involved as well. Kaylee Trung's got six points. Yvonne Ejim has six. They lead the way for the Zags. Taking a look at the tail of the tape after one. Gonzaga owning the boards as we have a foul on the floor already. That's on Mia Hughes. At the end of one, 15 rebounds for the Zags versus just six for Montana State, Bria. That you, and you can tell when you watch the game, a lot of second chances on that end of the floor for the Bulldogs. Right, a lot of second chances, and that's what's getting them there. Um, why their score is what it is versus my Montana, they need to get more offensive and defensive rebounds to put themselves at advantage. And there's Melody Kempton with a clear pass to the, to the rack. Gonzaga shot eight for 15 in the first. That's pretty good. And in on the floor, number 35, Bree Salenbein. First official look at her as a Gonzaga Bulldog. There she is guarding at the top of the key. Bree is the highest ranked player in Gonzaga recruiting history. Yeah, she was ranked fourth in her class. And there she is with her first rebound as a Gonzaga Bulldog. She feeds to Kempton, you bet. Melody Kempton, sixth, sixth man of the year for the WCC Conference and now starting and showing that she has been here, done that, and ready to do it again. The way she's playing, Bria, she looks really comfortable out there in a way that not a lot of players right now do. Right. She's showing she's experienced, and that thing, I believe that's what's also helping their team keep that. And there's Bree Salenbein. 35 Division I offers, including Michigan and Michigan State. Not surprisingly, that's where she's from. Indiana, Cal, Minnesota. Over 30. Pretty amazing. And she chose the Zags. All good news. Eliza Hollingsworth there with a the rejection. No foul on the floor. And here comes Strong. Up the court back to Hollingsworth. A little hot on the overhead pass. Why was landing Bree Salenbein so big for this program, Bria? I believe it was huge. Because like you already said, she is the highest recruit that Gonzaga has ever landed. But she is has a beautiful shot. Bree can knock down the three. And she has great size and handles that 
is remarkable for her. Yeah, so she, she is listed at six foot two, the true freshman, as White goes up for the shot. She gets fouled. But the cool thing about Salenbine is she can play, she could play anywhere between one, two, or three. And if she was playing a short team, I guess she could also play the four. Really versatile. So here's Darian White at the line. And that's only three points for her now on the evening. So they've done a pretty good job here so far, Bria, of keeping Darian White quiet, at least on the offensive end. Right. When the Zags were having their practice, they were picking out certain players that would mock the Bobcats, and mm. they had a shutdown for Darian to make sure that no one on their team got too, too hot. Yeah, so there she is on defense working on Trong here. Again, in case you're just joining us, she is the reigning Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year. Salenbein has that one poked away. Here comes White. She's got it going the other way. Like it's nothing. White, she loves that little jump floater and always seems to go in for her. Montana State, 261 steals last year. Depending on who you ask, they were the best defensive team in the Big Sky. Strong down low to Kempton. She's been good in motion like that. And a travel. Wow, beautiful cut and pass by Tron. Just wasn't able to finish. So that's what we're kind of seeing the last couple minutes with Melody Kempton, right? She's moving to the, going down the lane, and we see Trong finding her. Right. She's finding the open gap, and Trong's finding her. It's working well so far. Kempton looks very comfortable down low for GU. Outside here to Deedon. Deedee goes up a little bit long. Not using Deedon too much on offense. I'm a little bit surprised considering she shot 43% last year. In the transition, Kempton looks pretty good there. Shot won't go. Other things we noticed as we get started here with the second quarter. As they feed it outside to Lombardo, Gonzaga shot 6 for 11 from the free throw line in the first. As that one goes down from Deedon, uh, six for 11 from the line is not gonna cut it for you. Nah, it's not. You have to do more to get back in this game and to stay in this game against these Zags. You know, first game jitters though for g -Uni, you know? Six for 11 from the lines, first quarter, first game. I think that'll tighten up. It, they will, they will. Sierra Walker, a little bit long, already hit one, three in the first. Melody Kempton, the way she is running in and going after Jump balls, rebounds, scoring. She is really comfortable and the perfect addition to the game right now. Yeah, so we knew that she was going to look good. I, I am pleasantly surprised by just how aggressive she's playing, but but it's not an out of control aggression, right? She's not very at all. she's very within herself. She's going into these plays with a lot of confidence. She's playing hard. She's at a senior season, and I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> Here's Bad Bear. She's unfortunately stuck with Kemp tonight. That is a good aggressive power forward pairing down low. I have a foul on the floor. That's on Sierra Walker. Second of the quarter for GU. She's out and in comes Kaylin Trong. Nice tight defense on White. Ejim waiting in the lane. Lucky that one didn't go. Trong the rebound. That's going back the other way. You saw Ejim screaming to her teammate to let her know what was happening. I love how she's being vocal right now. That's one of the, the things. One of the things the coaches stress and that they want their players to do is to speak on offense and defense. I was going to ask you. Do you like the Zags' communication so far? I love it. I'd like to hear a little bit more, but. It's it's doing all right for me right now. We're hearing plenty on the offensive end of the floor for the Zags. Not a ton yet on the defensive end, although that'll change, you have to imagine. Tipped away. Kempton wasn't quite ready for that one. And White brings it back. She's starting to warm up a little bit, doesn't it feel like, Bria? Definitely. She's moving around. She's getting her teammates the ball. She's getting open. She's definitely finding a little rhythm. Air balls that one. She was guarded by Trong. A little confidence there. And up to Kaylee. Couldn't quite find her way around. Open Jay. 
Would have been easy enough. Nice rebound, Ejim. Look at a second chance. Kayleen Trong. She's got it. Kaylin Trong for three. And now both the Trong sisters have a three-pointer to get things started here in the season. Zags three for seven so far from downtown. You'll take that every day. Van Sickle's open in the corner now. She'll work it. O'Connor back in off the bench. Ejim going for that jump ball. All right, she's playing really aggressively, Bria. Gotta love Ronnie Ejim for the way she plays hard, and then she just happens to prop a smile on her face at the end of the play. And we have a timeout on the floor. Gonzaga still a nice cushion, 31-17. Back with more in a second on the WCC Network on Stadium. All right, depth, taxes, and stability in the coaching ranks in the Gonzaga basketball programs. Lisa Fortier starting her eighth year as the head coach tonight, but she's been here a lot longer than that, Bria. Before that, she was here for seven seasons as an assistant, uh, much of that under Kelly Graves. So obviously Mark Few on the men's side, and, and Gonzaga's Lisa Fortier started another season tonight. Right, and also one of the fun things that the team loves is that Lisa Fortier, her husband, Greg Fortier, is also an assistant coach, yep. and the team loves how they are in practice and how they talk to each other, but also teach them um, life lessons outside of basketball. It's a pretty good power couple for basketball, wouldn't you say? Definitely would say. It's uncommon, but I love it. Always fun to watch them interacting during the game in practice. We actually have a couple uh, husband and wife combos in terms of big, big level coaching in the area. Jen Greeny, the Wazoo volleyball coach, her husband is also on staff. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there's Lisa. And there's her husband, Craig. Ana Maria Verjoge checking back in for the Zags as we reach the midway point here in the second. Gonzaga still shooting strong, just shy of 53%, holding Montana State to 32. A lot of that's working down low, but they've hit a couple of threes as well. Plenty of space for Ejim. Foul on the floor. That one's on offense. Sent Van Sickle to the court. And Bree Salenbein back in as well for GU. That's for Johe's third foul. She was not happy with it, and they really want to take advantage of her size right now, especially while Hines is on the bench. And Eliza Hollingsworth checking in for GU, the 6'3 redshirt sophomore out of Melbourne, Australia. Always nice to have some extra height like that down low, especially in a game where it seems like height is working in Gonzaga's favor, Bria. Definitely. When Hines is out of the game, the tallest player on their team is Bat Bear for yeah, and, she, and she's not short, but you know, she is 6'2". Gonzaga has some guards that are 6'2", for, for what's that worth, exactly. including Bree Salenbein. Down low to Bad Bear. Great defense on the angle there by Hollinsworth to force that one out of bounds. All right, so let's talk a little bit there about Bree Salenbein, who's back into the game, Bria. How much are the Zags really going to ask her to do? We know that she's a star, highest recruited player coming into their program in history. Are they going to ask a lot out of her? I think they will start off slow, but if, as the season continues, they're expecting Bree to be a top player for them. Like you said, she is a top recruited player, so she has the skill. She just has to get more comfortable on this level and find her way with this Gonzaga team. There's Yvonne Ejim for two. Give her eight. Foul on the floor on the Bobcats. That's on Lexi Deedon. What a great dish from Trong to Ejim there. Huh? The passing has been really strong tonight. A lot of cutting, a lot of rotation. It's been very, very clean. Salenbein back to Ejim on the nicely designed play, and she's got it for two. Yvonne Ejim, the first zag to double digits tonight. She's got 10. She just gets down there and puts it up strong, and it goes in. And talk about efficient. She keeps finding a way out of the block, and it shows Bria. She's five for six. Five for six. She, she's just so comfortable down there on that block. I just love it. Five on the shot clock here. 
That one will not go. Deaton was covered. Out of bounds. This one will stay with the Bobcats. And Kelly Trong checking back in for the Zags alongside Michaela Williams, the sophomore out of Los Angeles. So in terms of players that Bria people think are going to have a breakout year for the Zags that people might not be super familiar with, a lot of people very high on Michaela Williams. Yes, Michaela is skilled. She's talented. We haven't been able to see it yet in this game, but I cannot wait to see what she brings for the Zags. Well, it has been on the floor a whole heck of a lot tonight for Montana State. Nice pass outside. Here's a three on the way. That one no good. It was hooked up by Madison Jackson, who's getting her first minutes of the night. Uh, surprising she missed that one. She shot 40 from downtown last year. And last, not last night, but in her last Tuesday game, night, yeah. Tuesday night, she was hot from the three-point line. Actually, the reason that they actually were able to secure that win when um, their opponent was fighting back. Every team needs a couple of pure shooters. They've got one in Madison Jackson for the Bobcats, and the Zags have one in Sierra Walker. Strong down the lane. That was aggressive. You love to see it. That'll stay down near the Kennel Club for GU. Gonzaga on a 7-0 run here in the last almost three minutes. Outside to Hollingsworth. Feed down low to Ejim. It keeps working, so keep doing it. Keep doing it. 12 points here on Ejim. And Hollingsworth with the assist. The bounce passes down low are really working, and now she's got a board. Strong. All right, everyone in this building knows who Yvonne Ejim is now. Strong and confident. That's all you need, and that's what she got. Zags keep going to the bucket hard. That was strong. Waiting for the foul. Montana State thought that one was going to be a charge. That one's on Michaela Williams. It was an off-the-ball foul. That's the team's fourth of the quarter here, and Abby O'Connor about to check back in. So we were talking about her last stop before she came to Gonzaga last year. She was at Loyola, Chicago. She was a Rambler. Yes. Of course, the last couple of years, that's a famous name in the college basketball world, Bria. Ramblers. <laughs> basketball programs there have been doing big things. Yes. She actually led Loyola in scoring and rebounding when she was before she came over to Gonzaga. Deaton. Free throw line jumper won't go. She came in hard for the rebound. They're playing physically on the block tonight as White goes up and can't connect. O'Connor the board. She's caught in a corner, and here she comes. Strong. A little bit off to the right. Zags now three for eight from beyond the arc. And most of those came pretty early. We haven't seen a lot in the last couple minutes. Madison Jackson. We saw some contact, did not see a foul. And a couple of chubs, uh, subs now checking back in for the Bobcats. Taylor Jansen in alongside Casey Arden. She also like Eliza Hollingsworth from Australia. A minute to play here in the first half. It's been all zags. Tipped away by Kempton. Defense continues to work down low for GU. O'Connor for three. So the last couple haven't gone here, Bria, but I like the aggression they're doing it with. Yeah, they're still going hard. They're not letting their misses stop them. And no foul as she went up. And here comes Strong to run. Kind of got stuffed at the point of attack there. I think they might have been caught a little bit out of position that time. Right. So this will likely be one last possession for the first half. Montana State ran out the clock the last time they did this at the end of the first. Got to think they'll do it again here for Darian White. <laughs> Expect her to take a shot. She was a 42% shooter last year. Very efficient. She will take the shot. And she's got it. One more chance here for Trong. Came close last time and comes close this time. We are through our first half against Zaga Women's Basketball of the Year, and it's a 20-point lead for GU. 
And it's time to send it to break at the end of the first. 37 to 19, Gonzaga here on the WCC Network on Stadium. All right, back here at halftime from the McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane. Greg Talbot and Bria Cade with you at the end of one. 37 to 19, Gonzaga, as the Bulldogs open up this new season of basketball here in front of fans for the first time in over 600 days. Bria, your takeaways here on the first half. We thought this thing would be close. Gonzaga seems to have it in hand so far. Definitely do. I give credit to Abby, Mel, and Ejim for the way they are so comfortable out here coming out, playing aggressive and hard. And really, like we said at the top of the broadcast, in case you weren't with us, the big thing everyone who roots for Gonzaga was waiting to see tonight was Having lost all three of their leading scorers and rebounders from last year, would this team look comfortable? Would this team have chemistry? Answer so far, yes, gangbusters. Yes, yes, yes. They definitely have chemistry, and yes, they are comfortable. What have you liked most you've seen so far? Most, I have to say the aggression, how hard they're playing. Mel is going for the rebound. She is going for the loose balls. Abby is literally driving to the basket, looking for the open shot. She is trying to do whatever she can to score. And then Ejim, she is just playing phenomenal down low. She is not scared going up strong and making sure everyone on the team is involved in doing what they're supposed to be doing. All right, 37-19 Zags at the end of the first half. Back with more of the halftime show next. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium. Halftime to open up the next Gonzaga women's basketball season on the WCC Network on Stadium. At the end of the first half, 37-19, Gonzaga on top of Montana State. Greg Talbot and Bria Cade with you here tonight on Stadium. Let's take a look at some highlights. And, uh, Bria, as we take a look at these, we have seen two really outstanding performances so far for the Zags in the first half. First among equals down low, Melody Kempton. She has looked so comfortable. Yes, you see right there, she just keeps going up. She gets to the basket, she goes up strong, and she finishes. Just what you need one of your elder players to be doing. Yep, she's done it on the block. She's done it in transition so far at the end of one. Seven points, six rebounds. Not bad. And there's Yvonne Ejim. She was really phenomenal. We said at the top of the broadcast she's going to have a breakout year. People in the building who didn't know her already know her now. Her first half of the season, 12 points, five rebounds, Bria. She's six from seven down low. The girl is going up strong and she's finishing. And when she does it, she grabs her own rebounds, tries again or kicks it out to the next teammate. Yep, so it's been Kemp and Ejim so far. We'll take a look at halftime stats and more in another minute here at halftime on the WCC Network on Stadium. Halfway home tonight on the WCC Network on Stadium for the Gonzaga Bulldogs season opener. At the end of two quarters, 37-19 GU on top, of Mon on top of Montana State. Boy, we talked about her a little bit in the halftime show, Bria Cade. Yvonne Ejim has come in tonight like a wrecking ball. If you didn't know her before, you know her now. You know her now, yes. I'm really excited to see how Yvonne is so comfortable this year, especially saying how they, she's not played in front of the, the Zag fans before. That's exactly right. Let's talk about that. So she's a true sophomore out of Calgary, Alberta. Last year, obviously, we did not have fans in here. So this is a big night for her. This is a big night for her. This is a big night for all the girls on the floor who are playing for this Gonzaga team. They miss the fans, as I've heard. Six for seven from the floor. She did it all over the court. Five rebounds as well. She's going to work her way into the starting lineup eventually if she keeps playing like that. Definitely. I mentioned before she gained her confidence in the WCC tournament last year. She saw that her coaches found some confidence in her, and that just boosted her up even more. I'm so glad she is exerting that on the court right now. And isn't it nice to have people back in this building? That's pretty good. Elsewhere, things we were looking at in the first half on the Montana State side of things, Darian White, they held her to three for nine shooting, which is not bad, Bria, considering she was their leading scorer last year at Bozeman. Right. GU's defense is actually doing great against the Bobcats in general. All of them are kind of struggling to either get open or knock down the shots. I credit GU's defense for that, and I hope to see that continue or to see the Bobcats get hot and give us a nice game for the second half. Both defense have been pretty strong. Three steals for Montana State, four for the Zags. But again, rebounds have been telling a lot. 25 boards for GU, 14 for Montana State. 
Gonzaga's going to keep feeding inside and seeing what works. Right. If, if the Bobcats want to come back into this game, they have to get the offense and defensive rebounds. Do they have to get back into this game from shooting, or what is it? I wouldn't say shooting. I would say they would have to grab the ball and maintain possession more than they are right now. They're limiting themselves to a one-shot possession while GU was getting two, three, four, and so that's putting GU at the advantage that they are right now. And there's Darian White. She will be wearing number zero for most of this year, so this is pretty funny. We saw her in the pregame. She was wearing number two. We were confused why. She said, the jersey wasn't ready for me yet. So she wore number two last year, and she'll wear number two tonight. She'll eventually go to her new number zero whenever that jersey is apparently ready back in Bozeman. Whenever it's ready, she'll be ready too. <laughs> <laughs> Lombardo for three. Off the mark, and there's White with the rebound. Man, she was so aggressive. She was pretty quiet in the first quarter. She really started to wake up in the second. She's definitely up. She's moving around. She's dribbling. She's moving quick. This is the quickest I've seen her move tonight. Hughes a little bit of a push. But she was fouled. Didn't do the fouling. And that's on Melody Kempton. Another team way too aggressive down low. It kind of looked at the start of the game like Montana State might be. We saw a couple of early fouls, but they settled in. Settled in nicely. Here's Beatty. Free throw line jumper won't go. And Verjoga comes up with it. Got a traffic jam down there on the floor. Abby O'Connor takes a while to get up, but she's got a smile on her face. She's okay. And there goes White for the steal and a foul. She reached in. She's complaining. It's not going to matter. Rajoga held on strong. That is a foul against White. That's her, sec sec her second personal. But, you know, considering how aggressively she plays, Bria, if you're Montana State, you'll be, f you'll be fine with two only so far. Definitely fine with two. A little long there from Kaylee Trong. A little slower start to the season shooting-wise. She's one for six from the floor tonight. Usually far more efficient than that, but she'll get going. Here's Lindsey Hines, so effective on Tuesday against Carroll College. Tonight, Verjoge's been on her pretty tight on defense, and there she is with a steal. And she got wrapped up. That's a foul on defense as well for Montana State. Likely that's, be on Hine. That's actually what I've been looking for all game long. I've been wanting to see those two post players go to work and see who was going to be the winner. So Ana Maria Verjoge, they're expecting a lot out of her this year, Bria. She's a red shirt senior. She's a veteran of veterans on a squad that doesn't have a ton of game playing experience with this program. She was really more of a bench player in the rotation the last couple of years, but they, they want her to really be a key contributor this time around. Yes, the Vergohe, she has been on this team for a while, like you already said, and she has the ability. Oh no, we have Kaylee Trong down here on the near side. Ouch. We'll take another look at this on the replay in just a second. See what ended up getting there. There. Hmm. Kind of got her on the side of the noggin there. She is sitting up. The good news is she's okay. Seems like it anyways. She'll head to the bench. And Kaylin Trong, her sister, will check back in. Kaylee's so necessary to this team last year. Their leading returning score at eight points a game. And we saw her really effective passing the ball in the first quarter as well. Yes, hopefully everything's all right with Kaylee and she'll be able to return um, before this quarter ends. 
got to think she'll be eventually fine. We didn't see what looked like anything truly horrendous on the injury scale there. Might not see her by the end of the game, although with what is nearly a 20-point lead, that, that would be fine for the Zags. No points yet in the second half after about two minutes, still 37 to 19, and there won't be any on this possession for GU as it's tipped away. Out in the corner for Lombardo. White going to work herself. And again, Trong with a strong defense. And here comes Kaitlyn Push and looking to pass. Sierra Walker back on the floor for the Zags. Had an early three. Haven't heard a lot out of her since. Trong. Cut right through the defense. Almost got her own board there. I think Montana State was kind of stuck in their defensive alignment and didn't see her sneaking through, Bria. I don't think they saw her either. Tipped away by Verjoge. Manch is going to work on defense and O'Connor there to collect. Got a defensive foul. That's on Mia Hughes, the third personal foul for the freshman out of Woodenville. Nice entry pass here to Kempton. Welcome to the second half, Melody. There she goes again, right up at the basket. Give her nine points now to go along with seven rebounds. She was so great on the post in the first half. Draws a foul on the way up. I think that foul's going to be on Melody. Me too. Ouch. Looks like she got knocked by an elbow on the way as well. She's headed back to the bench. I think she might have gotten an elbow to the mouth or something. And Yvonne Egem will check back in at her place. Let's take a look. Yep, that'll happen. That's contact. And Darian White knocks down the first to two. And after a not particularly loud first half, she's now gotten to 10 points. With four from the free throw line. That'll help for sure. Here's Sierra Walker. The dead eye shooter on this team, but instead she'll dish it out to Abby O'Connor. That one won't go, and Yvonne Egypt another board. The forwards are doing it all today for Egypt. And the Zags, there's Kaylin Strong, you bet. Giving a little repay for her twin while she's out. Kaylin Trong now to double digits. Give her 11 points on four for six shooting, two for two from downtown. She was really strong, like we said, in the exhibition and fan fest so far when we've seen her this year. Turns out she might be a shooter on this year's squad, Bria. She, I think she will, actually. I believe that her and her sister can get to the basket, but when you leave them open in practice, I've noticed both of them will knock down the three just like that. That's a foul on Ejim her first. Eliza Hollingsworth checking in here for GU. And the Zags now doubling up the Bobcats, 42 to 21 here midway through the third quarter. Everything's been working with the forwards. Verjoge on defense, Kempton in Ejim elsewhere. The three forwards have been huge, and Hollingsworth also now into the game. She's been effective on defense, but she's going to have a task here with the six foot six Lindsay Hine. Sierra Walker to the rim. And that is beautiful defense to transition. Bonnie with amazing defense. She's moving her feet, keeping her hands up. She was able to get that tip off to Sierra, and Sierra was able to finish. And that's what the Zags want. There Zags running again. trap. There's Strong, you bet. Looks and like this. Uh, full court press is giving the Bobcats some, some pressure. Yeah, this is some fun basketball for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They're off and running 46 to 21. We'll take a break on the WCC Network on Stadium. Well, that was a fun last sequence there. Kaylin Trong on the steal. 
and takes it all the way to the rack for GU. We talked about the first half efficiency from players like Ivan Egypt, six for seven from the floor. Kaylin Trong now leading all scores for Gonzaga. She's got 13 points, five for seven from the floor, two for two from downtown, Bria. What she's doing is exactly what the Zags want. As you saw, the bench was cheesing ear to ear, clapping for their teammates, and that's the energy that you would need from your point guard. Especially with her sister, Kaylee, potentially out. We don't know how long for an injury from what looked like it was her face a couple of minutes ago. So the Zags are down their starting point guard, but the good news, I mean, if there is good news about potentially losing your starting point guard is her sister looks to be like a really efficient shooter this season. And looks just like her. That too. <laughs> Twins will do that. Twins, how do they work? <laughs> Three rounds to go along with it as well. Gonzaga, nine steals as a team so far tonight. They've been very effective, especially these last couple of minutes as Michaela Williams checks back into the game for GU. Long one won't go down from Ashley Van Sickle, neither will the putback. Lexi Deeden went up with it. And here comes GU in transition. Montana State still 0 for from downtown, now 0 for 10 from beyond the arc. Avon Egypt, meanwhile, continues to be very efficient. Definitely. Now you call saw, that seven for eight. You saw the way she grabbed the ball and went straight to the basket. Here's White. Five on the shot clock, got to get rid of it. In a tough situation, the Zags continue to push on defense. Double-digit steals up to Ejim in transition, rejected by White. That was a pretty play, though. Very pretty. 11 steals now on the evening for GU. White hits from three, and that'll get him going. White's first three of the game, right, Greg? That's, my, that's the team's first three of the game, you bet. Oh, now one for 11 as a team from downtown. Shooting 9%. Trong's heating up. Dishes down low. Hollingsworth draws the foul against Hine. And that'll take us to a break on the WCC Network on Stadium. Still all Zags, 48-24. All right, back on the WCC Network on Stadium. Gonzaga doubling up Montana State, 48 to 24 here midway through the third quarter. You know, Bria Kate at the top of the broadcast, the big question that I had for you was, can Gonzaga look like a team with a lot of chemistry considering how much they lost last year? The answer is, asked and answered. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Yes, they can. I believe it's all started from the summer though. They gel really really well and had multiple bonding trips and different activities to make sure the team was able to have this chemistry they have right now they are playing with chemistry so far it looks like a lot of new faces but this is a team that knows what they're doing as eliza hollingsworth delivers her first to two and Bree salenbein checks back in off the bench for the zags And she'll be playing the three here. Potentially two, we'll see. She can play all kinds of positions. Listed as a guard on the roster at six foot two, but she can also do it on the post. Working defense here against Van Sickle. Outside to Maki. Won't go and Egypt the rebound. Getting it done on the boards. Now eight for her. Salenbine. A little bit short, but I like the aggressiveness. 
Expect those three-pointers from Bree to start going down pretty soon. During the Fan Fest three-point contest a couple weeks ago, she won. She won. Actually, Bree and Sierra shoot together at practice when they do their three-point shooting. So, like you said before, their threes will start dropping, and those are the shooters on their on the team. Well, if you're a freshman for the Zags in Bree Salenby and Sierra Walker, is who you want to take three-point lessons from? Exactly. <laughs> Three minutes to go here in the third. Nice cut down low on the feed to Madison Jackson. And Here's Salenbein trying to go to work. Off the ball, Fallon of Ana Ijim. Look at this cut from Jackson. That was pretty good. Kind of burned debris back on the back door. Verjoga and Kempton checking back in. Zags going back to their forward lineup. And all right, Bria, this is a pretty tall lineup. This is the tallest we have seen tonight probably on the hole for the Zags. We have Trong out there at point guard, but elsewhere, Salenbein, Verjoge, Kempton, and Williams. This is a lineup that I would expect to see more often from the Zags because of the size that is out here. Williams is a guard with great size, and Bree is as well. Everybody out here, with the exception of Kaylin Trong, is over six feet tall. <laughs> and the rebounding continues to work. This is a good rebounding lineup. Let's go. Yes, it really, really is. The Zach's size right now is literally what every girls basketball team would kind of want. You want your guards to be tall. You want your post players to be tall. And that's what they have. And here's Kaylee Trong. She's back. To a cheer from the crowd. It looked like Kay Kaylin got a little jammed up and had to come out and now her sister came to replace her. Yeah, so as Kaylin goes to the bench, she looks, she's kind of playing what looks like her left knee or something. It just got a little bit jammed. She, she looks fine though. Maybe a cramp in the calf. And there's Melody Kempton for one. So good news that Kaylee Trong is fine. She did not miss very many minutes at all. Right, she's back. Back before the end of the quarter, like you said, Bria. Great. And boy, is this a heck of a rebounding lineup, huh? Like you just said, that size, there you go. Everybody besides the Trongs right now on the floor who are over six foot. Yep. Going back the other way. And that's not a bad lineup to have, to have Bree Salenbein as a six foot two shooting guard. Right. That's a pretty good tall lineup. I, I really expect to see this lineup as the season continues. Especially when you play bigger teams, right? Right, because they're going to need Vergohe out there. You're, gonna want, you're, gonna, you're going to want Bree out there. And Kempton's going to be out there most of the way. Kempton will definitely be out there. <laughs> Especially in games that matter, huh? Inside two minutes to play here in the third. Here's Jackson. Strong defense and a charge. Melody Kempton playing so aggressively tonight. Really commanding the floor, huh? She looks like the senior leader they need. She looks like the senior leader they need. She is the senior leader they need. She is doing everything that you want your player to do fundamentally. Strong back in and gets a couple of points. Even then, you just see how Mel backed her person up so that Strong could get around, get to the basket. She is, she is doing her job. And there is Madison Jackson. Like we said, she shot 40% from downtown last year. They've been waiting on that one. That's their second three ball of the night. Cut to Kempton, perfect. No worries for Kimpton right now. These designed plays for the Zags are really working. It, it seems to be working better a lot of the time, especially on cuts and in passes. I'd say the design plays seem to be working really well compared to just playing free out there. Right. They're definitely trying to move that ball around and then get backdoor cuts. Because like you said earlier, you can just get sneak right past the Bobcat and then you're right at the basket. Not just a whole lot of pure shot creation, but the passing and movement's been very good. Williams, that would have been an NBA three. 10 on the shot clock. 
Salenbein, not a bad shot. Rebound down low for Joge. Second chance to Salenbein. No. Kempton goes in for it. It's a jump ball. Stays with GU. The move Salen by May just kind of show the skill that she does have, even though she has not scored yet. That past move did show what she can do. She will. All right, so Williams to the bench. And Abby O'Connor checking back in at her place. Abby got the start tonight. Kempton back to Trong to the top of the key. Five seconds in the quarter. Draws a foul. Number six on Montana State. And they'll send her to the free throw line. Montana State calls number two, Jerry White, that's her third personal. The line will hold on to number 11, Kaylee Trong. She'll have two. So Kaylee Trong back in. She's got eight points so far. Make it nine. She had kind of a slow start, Bria. She started from the floor one for five. What's been going better here? I think as the game continued to go, her, she watched her, who we were on the floor with, players like Melody and Ejum, you're going to start picking up off their vibe, their energy, and that's going to help you pick up your game. And I think I would also say, too, here as we end the quarter, having the forwards do so much offensively kind of opened up the door for Kaylee Trump. Right, exactly. She's been able to just play her own little game as she finds her rhythm because of the forwards letting her find her rhythm while they take over. All right, three down, one to go. 56 to 29 Gonzaga on the WCC Network on Stadium. All right, back to start the fourth and final quarter here. The Zag season opener on the WCC Network on Stadium. Might have to re-inbound this one. Referee restarting play. So big things to talk about here, Bria Cade, as we start the fourth quarter of play here. Still shooting percentage. Gonzaga out shooting the Bobcats 48 to 26. Yes, I was just looking at Darian's White. Her, her field goal percentage being 4 from 12, it's not bad. They just really, Gonzaga's defense has not allowed them to get too many shots off or even become open. Five on the shot clock. That one won't go from Hughes. And again, the Zags continue to out-rebound Montana State. They've been all over the boards tonight, 36-24 to GU. Speaking of down low points in the paint, the Zags 34, Montana State 10. Zero walk already hit one three. Didn't pull the trigger. Another foul down low. One more thing to talk about. Points off of turnovers. A lot of steals for the Zags tonight, Bria. They got 21 points off turnovers. Yes, that's where the energy is coming from off their defense. They're playing great defense and then being able to score off those um, turnovers that they're forcing. Zags, 11 steals so far. Montana State, just five. Also, so what you said about the Zags having um, the points in the paint and the Bobcats having 10. In the last game on Tuesday, the Bobcats have 40 points in the paint, so that's just a huge difference in how they're playing today and how that ended up being their win and how they are today. Now, Bria, that's a good stat. <laughs> Thank you. I'll tell the story. Here's Trong. Oh, with the left hand. Yes, sir. All right, Kaylee Trong is waking up on offense after a pretty slow start. Give her 12 points. Four assists as well. Zags have been great down low so far. Montana State can't find their way to the block. Van Sickle for three, dials it up. And Montana State wants a timeout to try to get back in this thing. 58 to 32, our score. We'll take a break here. On the WCC Network on Stadium. All right, down the home stretch we come on the WCC Network on Stadium. Greg Talbot and Bria Cade with you tonight along for the ride. So we talked at the beginning of the broadcast about how much Gonzaga lost last year, but here's 
about the consistency, Bria. Still picked the finish second with a couple of votes in the WCC preseason poll. Yes, Gonzaga will give this WCC a run this year. They may have lost their three top scores, but they have the way their chemistry is and the players and the pieces they have, they will be a threat this season. Middle of the pack, San Diego, San Francisco, Portland. So those are thought to be the top half of the conference. And there's Lisa Fortier entering her eighth season at the helm of this program. Zags pick up in a second just behind BYU. And if the Zags keep playing with this much chemistry the rest of the season, Bria, I think those games against the Cougars will be pretty good. I do as well. So nice to hear the Kendall Club back in here, huh? Definitely. As the song continues to keep going while the music stops. Down to Verjoge. What a pass! And what a cut from Ana Maria. That was pretty good looking. And Kaylee has the biggest smile on her face after that assist. That's what you want. You want your point guard to be able to find your post or find your players and then be happy. So off the top of the broadcast tonight coming into this season, we were expecting a lot out of Kaylee Trong. She was certainly passing it around. Wasn't doing a whole lot of scoring off the top. Again, she was one for five from the field to start the game. As that one's around and off and rebounded by Kempton. There's a foul on the floor. But really once the forwards started scoring and rebounding so well, that kind of opened it up for Kaylee to start doing things. And now this team's found a rhythm. Now the team has found a rhythm. And that last rebound actually gave Mel her 10th rebound of the game. Yeah, Mel to Kempton, welcome to Double Double Land, your first game of the season. 12 points, 10 boards. In terms of other players down low, Abby O'Connor's also got eight boards, as does Yvonne Ejim. So Yvonne might get into double-double territory before the end of the night as well. She's back on the floor. Abby O'Connor, pure. Abby has a beautiful pull-up shot when she get, drives into the lane. All right, so this movement, this pace, this feels more like last year's Gonzaga team, right? You're seeing a little bit more movement. Exactly. Here's Lombardo. Works it outside to Van Sickle, just hit a three. Inside 10 to shoot. This is Jansen for Van Sickle. Three on the clock. Got to go up. Can't quite get it to go, and smart there by Kaylee Trong not to foul. This will be a second chance here for Montana State. A little bit hard from White. And Abby O'Connor pulls it down. That's going to be nine boards. She's going to get the 10 tonight. She will. Oh. A little miscommunication there as Maud Hybins just checked into the game for the first time. Pass was intended for her. Don't think she knew it was coming. But let's talk a little bit about Maud Hybins. They're really happy to have her on this team and in this program now, Bria. She's a Syracuse transfer. This is a big get. Yes, and she is. She knows how to handle the herself down there on the block. She has great size, as you can see. When she gets posted, she is open. So the best thing would be for her to get herself open and let them feed her. Yeah, Lisa Fortier said they're really excited to have her in the program because of how versatile she is for a post player. So she can also score up top or down low. Definitely. Nice move to Deed in there. She's got it for two. Deedon's also one who can make some post moves down low if need be. Yeah, Deedon, like we said, their number two shooter coming back from last year's team, held her to four points tonight so far. The defense has been all over her on the post. Trong. Five to shoot, here's Williams. Gotta do it herself. That was almost from behind the backboard. And Maude Hyben, certainly a presence there in the middle. Look at her, six foot three, the freshman. Zags have size this year, that's for sure. Turn around from Deedon, she's getting going, that's six points. Deedon is getting warm at the end of the fourth. About five minutes to go here. It's going back the other way. It's on Trong and Ejim. Yeah, 
Well, the second foul of the quarter so far on the Zags as Sierra Walker heads back to the bench. So we took a second to look at this a minute ago, Bria, in terms of the WCC standings heading into the year. Do we think Gonzaga is number two with a bullet, or can they contend for number one with the Cougars? They can definitely contend for number one with the Cougars. If they play like this. If they play like this, which I believe they will, they are going to be a huge threat and problem in this conference and to every team they play against. Now the issue is BYU, not only are they talented, they're kind of the opposite of the Zags. Pretty much everyone came back from BYU. Really? So that's going to be tough. Yeah, they already have their chemistry, but hopefully by the time that game comes up, the Zags will have theirs locked down solid. And they don't, got, they don't have to play each other for a while. Here's Lexi Deaton. Montana State, after that last couple of possessions, now back down inside 30% shooting on the night. Zag defense has been all over him. Here comes Duden for number two. And she'll connect inside five minutes to go. All right, to start to wind this one down here, Bria Cade, what are our big takeaways from game number one? Let's start on offense. What worked tonight on offense for GU? For GU, what worked on offense was their ball movement, how they had everyone consistently moving in those backdoor cuts. They got their point guard to find the open players and their fours were the ones that were really the keys to this game today, whether they were shooting, rebounding, or just playing so hard. Got to get rid of it. Two on the shot clock, and Salenbine traveled. Yeah, so a lot worked on offense. The first quarter, there wasn't a whole lot of movement, right? And because of that, they were playing a little bit stilted, a mm -hmm. little bit sluggish, and they had to feed down low to get points. Once they opened up the floor, they started moving around. This offense started to look pretty good looking. Pretty good looking. Yeah, pretty like pretty. <laughs> For Joga and the rest of the forwards did a pretty good job tonight. Living in Cola Bad Bear as she drives. Tried to pass it away, and it's stolen by Trong. That's Salenbine. Going back the other way. Fans here do not like it in the kennel. Bray Salenbein still looking for her first points of the zag. Question is, will it come tonight? That was a charge. The top like that, she has great size and she's quick in her feet. Another steal for the Zags, 13. Here's Williams in transistor, rejected, no foul. Possession will stay down there. All right, other, so that's what we like on offense. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, rebounding pretty strong. They've got just about 40 rebounds so far tonight. I actually give them exactly 40 now after that last possession. But elsewhere on defense, man, 13 steals. That is excellent for game one of the season. Excellent. They're definitely going after <laughs> everything. Strong from deep. Oh, that's good looking too. 16 points for Kaylin Trong. That's another thing we like. Kaylin Trong is a dead eye shooter. Kaylin Trong is a shooter. And as you saw, her whole bench team jumped up as excitement with her as she chased for that. Again, she looked great in the exhibition and fan fest, but man, uh, she is shaping up. She and Sierra Walker to be a pretty sharp outside combo. Five on the clock here for Deaton. Nice last minute move there by White. That's her little move. She drives to the basket, yep. creates a little space, and does that floater, and it goes in. She's uh, already been in double digit points for quite a while tonight. That last shot gave her 15 points. She always gets her points. The good news is the Zags, if you're a Zags fan, 
They really pulled away before she could do any of that damage. For Joe Gay. Oh, that's pretty. Nice. And the Zags will take a break here on the floor to bring in a couple more substitutions. And checking in for the first time, Esther Little. This will be her first game as a Gonzaga Bulldog, the 6'2 freshman out of Ipswich, England. And people are really high on Esther Little. Nice to have her on this team. Uh, she played for the English national team at every level, and she was a star there. So look for number zero on the floor now for the Zags. She'll be in the top corner here. Branson, not a bad looking shot, just a little bit long. Maude Hybins on the rebound. We have a foul on a kickball by the Bobcats. With about two minutes to go, they'll send Kenzie Stumney into the game for her first minutes. And the other big thing to love tonight, Bria, as we hit the two minute mark, the Gonzaga forwards. I mean, my gosh, will they play teams taller than Montana State this year? Yes, they're going to play Wazoo, right? They're going to play Stanford. Right. They have some massive games in the next couple of weeks. But in, in terms of size, the forwards and offense seem to go together really well. And speaking of the double, there's Eliza Hollingsworth. Very close. Yes, they have. They find each other. They work with each other. They work their post into their offense. And that really works well for them. Their post, like you said, they will play taller teams, but their teams have size, and they know how to work with them. And there's Stumney. Gets into the game about 30 seconds ago, delivers her first points. And Brea, last question here as we hit the one minute mark. Like we said a second ago, Gonzaga's got some big non-conference games. Stanford is coming here. Wazoo is coming here. It's going to be really something as Salenbein gets fouled. Based on what we're seeing tonight, I think we might have a couple competitive games on our hands when coming into the season. You know, maybe we weren't so sure. They, there definitely will be some competitive games. The girls are already ready for the game. Speaking with Looks some like of them, it. they were saying they can't wait for Stanford, so I can't wait for Stanford. No good from Salenbein. She looks a little frustrated out there. It's her first college game. She will eventually be the star on this team a couple of years down the road. And there's her first point of many as a Gonzaga Bulldog. She definitely will warm up as the season continues. No question about that. They didn't put her in the starting lineup. They want her to develop and get comfortable. They don't want to put too much on her shoulders right away. Right. Nice three from Beatty downtown. Shots now falling for the Bobcats. As I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too worried if I was Montana State. I think by the time they get to conference play in the Big Sky, they're going to be just fine. Like the Zags, they were picked to finish second in the preseason poll. Here's Williams. Not a great angle that time. Yanked down by Salenbein. Like the move there, the shot didn't go. She gets the board and feeds Maude Hybins. That's not bad from the Syracuse transfer. Nice feed from Bree Salenbein. And this might do it here. Montana State's going to head back to Bozeman without a win. The Gonzaga Bulldogs start off the season with a W. Three from Ranson goes. That'll change the final score. And there it is, 72 to 47. A big night on offense for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. This is a pretty good looking team, Bria. Pretty great looking to me. So this is a difficult one. Who is our player of the game? We chose Yvonne Ejim, and man, what a debut of a season for her. We saw her play last year, but this was really something special. 14 points, eight rebounds, kind of unstoppable. So efficient, seven for nine from the floor. That's only the beginning of Ejim. I expect to see her have many games like this for the rest of the season, as the season continues. Um, especially some double-doubles in there. She goes hard on the block, and she gets those rebounds. Other really important things, both of the Strong sisters in double figures. Kaylee had 12 points. Kaylin 
had 16 points. Yeah, those two are going to be great to watch this year. They've been here, they've done that, they're comfortable. They went from being distributors to now scores and distributors. It's going to be great. All right, that was a pretty fun one to start off the season. Gonzaga 72, Montana State 47. The big thing of this one was Gonzaga's defense held Montana State to just 32% shooting, and I think this is going to be a pretty fun team to watch this year. So for my analyst, Bria Kay, and the rest of our WCC network crew tonight from the kennel for the first time this year, I'm Greg Talbot saying thank you so much for being with us. This was a fun one to kick off the season. We'll see you next time on the WCC network on Stadium.